Good morning, field biology students. Today we're going to talk through the winter constellations. And these are the constellations that are um, visible in our sky from about the time you get off of school for uh, beginning of December, I'd say, uh, through Christmas break and into February and even in, into March. So we're a little bit past that time frame right now, but uh, these are um, very easy to see in the winter if you're out in the winter. Uh, winter is a great time to view clouds. We get some nice clear skies and uh, when I learned constellations in college, this was actually the section that we were able to study because of the time the class took place. So we we're looking in that February and March time frame. All right, so we'll start off with the first one, Orion. And most of you have probably heard of Orion. Orion is the hunter. And very easy to spot in the sky. In fact, you can still see Orion um, right now if you go outside in the evening and look to the west or southwest. But what you look for is the Orion's belt, which is three stars all in a row. And Orion makes an hourglass type shape with the belt, of course, in the belt part of the figure. And we have an outstretched arm carrying a club or something, and then also one with a bow. And there's actually two guidepost stars for this constellation. Betelgeuse, which might remind you of a movie, and Rigel. And Betelgeuse, if you look up the meaning of the word, actually translates into the armpit um, or the shoulder, sometimes people use. This is a really bright orange star. So uh, if you look at the other videos I'm attaching today, you'll get a sense of how big that star actually is. And then Rigel is a blue star. So that we have these opposing stars on either side of the constellation and they're different colors, orange and blue. And this is the key for finding the other winter constellations. Next we have Canis Major, and Canis, if you think about what we've learned in field biology with skulls and mammals, Canis refers to the dogs, canine, right? And Major means big, so this is the great dog or the bigger dog, and its guidepost star is called Sirius. Are you serious? Yes, it's called Sirius, which is also called the dog star, and this is our brightest star in our night sky. So, uh, if you know where you're looking, pretty easy to pick out that star. We see a, a, a kind of a stick figure dog shape. At least that's how I would draw a dog, being the great artist that I am. And we couldn't have a Canis Major without having a Canis Minor, right? So Canis Minor is the little dog. And this one you do need to use some creativity for. Uh, I could ask what's wrong with you if you don't spot a dog here, but I don't think there's anything wrong with you. It's tough to see a dog here, okay? Uh, but we have two stars, the guidepost, which is Procyon. And let's look at these together, because I think this will make sense if you see them together. Okay, maybe this will shed some light on why uh, Canis Minor is the way it is. So we have Orion the Hunter, and even in this picture, you can see those stars that represent the bow coming out from his outstretched arm. We can see the belt. We can see Betelgeuse. We can see Rigel. And this is the hunter and his hunting dogs. He's got a big one and he's got a small one. So his big dog is following him. His little dog is following him. So it really goes along well with the mythology. Our fourth star set or constellation in the winter sky is Gemini. And some of you might be familiar with Gemini. Gemini is actually one of the zodiac constellations. And the zodiac symbols represent an entire another layer to all of this. And we may get to that. But the Gemini represents the twins. And in Greek mythology, those two twins were Castor and Pollux, which are the names of their guidepost stars. And this is one of the 
few cases, if not the only case, where the mythological creatures are represented by stars. Castor, Pollux. And notice the stars represent their heads, and you have these two stick figures holding hands. Kind of a cool layout there, and uh, very, very fitting. Think back to maybe the early people who saw this, and look at it from their perspective. I think uh, all of us can understand and appreciate that. Fifth winter constellation is called Origa. The correct pronunciation is Origa. This represents the charioteer. And if you guys know what a chariot was, it's a horse-drawn transportation. Um, charioteer would be the guy who drives the chariot. Sometimes people just call this the chariot, and that works too. A good way to remember the name for that is, instead of saying origa, say it with a soft G, Arija. What would you say to a chariot? Arija, right? Arija, Arija, and you can remember that. And that's that's the way I remember it. The guidepost star is called Capella. And the interesting thing about Capella is that in the winter time, this star is pretty much directly overhead. So if you're outside observing constellations in the winter sky and you looked straight up, you would see Auriga or Arija and Capella. And what do you wear on your hat when you go outside in the winter? A cap. And so that's a great way to remember it. There's a couple other features associated with Auriga. There is this distinctive triangle. And I know we said the other day that any three stars make a triangle or any three points, but uh, this one is actually pretty noticeable in the sky. And this is the kids. And so it's representing children riding on the chariot. And then you can also see we have another constellation attached to this, which we will get to called Taurus. And some of you may recall that that is the bull. And then we'll also talk about this today too. All right, so continuing on, Taurus the bull. Now I use this slide just because I, I felt it was one of the better pictures I, I could find for Taurus. Uh, Taurus also is a zodiac symbol. So when you do a search for Taurus, you get a lot of other uh, things instead of nice constellation pictures or simplified pictures. So this is Taurus the bull, and these actually represent the horns of the bull. And then there's some additional stars which connect. Uh, f from our perspective, typically this one's kind of a tough one to pick out. So we focus mainly on those two lines of stars, and even those are tough to really pinpoint. All right, one of the one of the horns does attach to the chariot, so in a sense, it's almost like the bull is attached to that chariot. Its guidepost star is called Aldebaran, and Aldebaran is right here, and that actually represents the eye of the bull. It's a, a reddish, orangish star, Aldebaran. And then we also have what's called the Pleiades. And you may have heard of the Pleiades before. The Pleiades is an interesting thing. It's, it's, a, it's defined as a star cluster. And if you look at this description of how to find it, we take Orion's belt and we follow the line of Orion's belt, which will lead us to Eldebaran, or the eye of the bull and Taurus's horns. Okay, So we can see what Orion might be aiming at. Um, but if we extend that out further, we arrive at the Pleiades. And the Pleiades are the seven sisters. There's um, seven stars there. And the very interesting thing about that is if you look directly at Pleiades, it will seem to disappear. But if you look off to the side a little bit, you see it. And so um, the way the light works, I don't know if it's the atmosphere, our eyes, the light... 
whatever it is, it's uh, looking at it directly doesn't work. You need to look a little bit off to the side and then you're able to actually see it. So it's, it's a very twinkly formation. Uh, once you're able to find it, it's, it, it's pretty fun to look up or even teach people how to find uh, Pleiades. And then the, uh, another neat feature of the winter constellations is we get what's called the winter hexagon. If we take all of the guidepost stars from the constellations that we've just talked about, we can make a um, six-sided figure, which is fairly symmetrical. But we start here, we'll start up here at Capella. I gotta get my cursor, there we go. Capella, I go over to either one really, Castor or Pollux. Gemini, I follow that down, where the heck, there it is, to Procyon of Canis Minor, Sirius, which is super, super bright for us in Canis Major, follow that over to the knee of Orion or Rigel, up to the eye of the bull or Aldebaran, and then back up to Capella, and that's called the Winter Hexagon. So. Winter's got a lot of cool, cool things to look for. Um, I, I wish that maybe we could, you know, uh, revisit this in the winter. Not going to be able to do that. Uh, however, this is something that maybe you can retain or uh, try to look at next winter. And I think that might be it for my winter ones. Let me hit the button. Yes. Okay, so we do have still the autumn or fall constellations, and I will put that together for next week. Um, today, I would like you to, after watching this video, go ahead and watch the two other videos I have on star size, and then fill out the attached journaling assignment. Next week, we will zoom. Um, I'm thinking probably next Thursday, maybe we'll do a zoom. Um, I'd like you to try to get outside, try to identify a few constellations if possible. And other than that, we'll touch base on Monday, or scratch that, we'll touch base on Tuesday. All right, enjoy the weekend. It is going to warm up. Uh, feel a little more spring-like, so stay healthy, take care, and get all your classwork done. All right, till next time.